the worst cabin on any cruise ship is the one that doesn't suit your needs. While it is true that one cruiser's horrible cabin experience might be another's best vacation, there are some general cruise ship cabins to avoid, and are like most cruisers, and you're picky about things like slamming doors, lack of views, or dance music after midnight. To help ensure you have the best vacation possible, we put together this list of the 12 cruise ship cabins you need to avoid for your next cruise, plus the cabins you should book instead up next. Welcome aboard cruisers, I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you plan the perfect cruise so you can see the world one port at a time. Now, unlike hotels, many cruise lines let you actually pick your cruise cabin. And the worst possible thing you do is pick the wrong cabin. Because let's be honest, you're probably gonna be stuck with that cabin for the duration of the cruise, as most cruise ships sail at essentially 100% occupancy. But don't worry, we have you covered, because in this video, we have 12 cruise ship cabins to avoid when booking your next cruise, and we break them down by the most common complaints we hear from cruisers. So let's dive in. Whether you're new to cruising or have cruised in the past, a common complaint we hear from individuals is that they get a little bit seasick or are sensitive to the movement of the ship. If that sounds like you, then you need to avoid cabins located forward or on the upper decks. The motion of the ocean depends on many factors like the time of year you're sailing, the weather conditions, and the speed of your cruise ship. While captains and officers do their best to avoid rough seas, sometimes a little rocking is unavoidable. Thus, if you're concerned about seasickness on your cruise, cruise ship cabins to avoid are the ones that are either extreme end of the vessel. All the way forward or the front of the ship is where the pitching, that lurching forward feeling, is more likely to occur. You're also going to feel more of the motion the higher you are on the ship, or the higher you are above sea level. So the worst cabins on a cruise ship, if you're aiming to avoid motion sickness, are forward cabins at the top of the ship. Now what should you book instead? Well, luckily this is an easy fix. If you're prone to seasickness, you should book a midship cabin. Midship cabins are exactly what they sound like, in the center of the ship. And you should try to get a deck that's kind of in the middle of the ship, maybe one or two decks above the centralized promenade, which depending on your cruise ship could be anywhere from decks five through eight. Now honestly, the wife and I have been on over 65 cruises and we almost never feel the ship moving. And when we do encounter rough waters, the motion of the ship doesn't bother us. But we are individuals who like to get a good night's sleep. And if you're like us, then there are several cruise ship cabins you need to avoid because quite honestly, they're the worst. And the number one on our list are cabins that are either directly above or directly below entertainment venues. Now this applies to many different venues, either the theater, the bustling bars and lounges, and especially the nightclubs. During the day, nothing seems out of the ordinary in these cabins underneath the disco. However, this will all change around midnight when you're trying to sleep and all you can hear is 1970s music. The easiest way to identify one of these cruise cabins is to work with a travel advisor who will help you navigate where the central hubs of activity are located on your cruise ship. Of course, you can also do your own research can locate your ship's deck plans, typically found on a cruise line's website, to pinpoint those busy decks that will be hopping late into the night. Now, of course, if you plan to be one of the individuals in the nightclub or in these venues till late in the evening, then the noise might not be as big a concern for you. When you cruise might also be a factor. Are you cruising during spring break? Are you cruising on the brand new Virgin Voyages? Just do a little homework on the party vibe before booking a cabin that is located too close to any entertainment venue. And we can actually speak from personal experience here, as we were booked in a cabin next to Norwegian Prima's main theater, and there were several nights that we could hear the disco happening below us. In fact, one night it got so bad, we actually went and complained. What can you do instead? Well, again, really simple fix. Just don't book a room near any of the entertainment venues. The main theater is always located forward on the ship, and it's usually in the lower decks like decks two through five. So don't get a cabin near there. Likewise, the nightclubs and other live music venues tend to be located midship, also on the lower decks. So going up a couple decks, maybe to decks eight, nine, or 10, or a little bit higher, will most likely eliminate any noise you would hear from the entertainment venues down below. Likewise, another cabin you definitely want to avoid if you're sensitive to noise are cabins too close to the elevator banks. 
Now, at first glance, it might feel appealing to have a room that's close to the elevators and the stairs. But if you're looking to avoid noise, then you might want to think again. These areas are almost always busy, with elevators dinging, people laughing and chatting in the lobby, and of course, kids stomping around up and down the stairs. Again, you might not notice this noise while you're out and about during the day, but the moment you try to retire for the evening and the lights go out, you might be surprised how loud elevator banks can actually be. This is especially true when cruisers might have had one too many to drink. Choosing a cabin that's a little ways down the corridor and not immediately facing the elevator banks and stairs should diminish much of this noise. Other cabins you definitely want to avoid are those located next to the crew areas. Now, this might be hard to locate from just looking at the deck plans, so you can check with a travel advisor or a cruise line rep to help locating the crew areas on your particular ship. If you cruise, we don't have to tell you that the crew members keep insanely busy and usually work long hours or there are multiple shifts. So as much as we love the crew, no one wants to hear the sounds of door slamming morning, noon, and night. Crew areas are tucked around the ship, either leading to service entrances or the crew quarters. There's a whole secret part of the ship designated for crew only. Though the doors that lead there might be located at the end of the hallway and right across from your cabin. For security, many of these doors are heavy and automatically slam shut behind the person entering. Crew access to other parts of the ship is a necessity, but booking a room across from these often loud areas is not. Likewise, one of the worst cabins on any cruise ship are cabins next to the anchor. The anchor is a hidden piece of ship equipment that makes a less hidden sound when raised or dropped. Larger cruise ships employ various types of technology, including stabilizers, to keep the ship in place. This means that the anchor is infrequently dropped, but when it is, it's usually very early in the morning upon arrival at a port. The anchor on every ship is located at the front of the vessel. If you're looking to avoid any unexpected wake-up calls or a clanging metal, do not book a forward cabin on the lower decks. You might be right above the anchor's storage area. On smaller ships, the anchor is more obvious and less avoidable. On expedition vessels, the itinerary is typically less structured, meaning you might drop anchor at various points throughout the day to kayak or a whale watch. Be aware of your cabin's position next to active anchor. And if you want to avoid any noise, we suggest booking a cabin midship or on upper decks. Now we know some people are a little apprehensive about going on a cruise. They don't want to be stuck on the same vessel for a week with thousands of strangers or they're often concerned they're going to be stuck in tight quarters with no way to escape. Now, if that sounds a little bit like you, whether it's a little bit of crowd anxiety or just feeling claustrophobic, one of the worst cabins you can pick are inside cabins. Now, of course, inside cabins can be a great value, particularly if you don't plan to spend a lot of time in your room. However, for many first-time cruisers, making the mistake of booking the cheapest cabin only to find out they're in a small windowless box. Manage your expectations if you're booking an interior room for your next cruise. While these entry-level accommodations allow you and your travel party to set sail on a budget, not having any windows can be jarring for some. In addition, the lack of any view, the square footage is also low in these staterooms. Waking up in an inside room can also be tricky. There's no natural light, which means the room is pitch black unless the lights are on. A really simple fix here is to simply upgrade to the next cabin category, an ocean view. Along with getting a little bit more room in the stateroom, you'll get coveted views of the ocean or the landscapes without too much added cost. Another one of the worst cabins you can pick on a cruise ship are cabins with obstructed views. If you're paying to have a view, make sure you know exactly what you're getting a view of. Obstructed cabins are typically listed as such. These cabins usually offer a lower price point than rooms with unobstructed views. However, some of these cabins are only partially obstructed. One part of a tender bow is covering the corner of the window, while others are fully obstructed from an ocean view by ship hardware. While some obstructed cabins might let in a little natural light, the experience might be more similar to an inside cabin than a balcony. Look up reviews of your obstructed view cabin online before booking. There's a very good chance someone has stayed in your room before and may have posted a picture in their review. Whether a cabin has an obstructed view will most likely be noted on the deck plans for your particular cruise ship. But if it's unclear if a cabin has an obstructed view, another good rule of thumb is, is to get a cabin that's a little bit higher up in the ship. 
Typically, obstructive view cabins tend to be on the lower decks because that's where more of the hardware is like lifeboats. So if you're not sure if a particular cabin has an obstructed view, going up a couple decks might alleviate any concerns. Now we're all for making friends, but when we return to our cabin, we want some privacy or at least as much privacy as you can get being on a cruise ship. If you're like us, then one of the worst cabins you can purchase are interior balcony cabins. Now you might be saying, wait a second, how can a cabin facing the inside of the ship still have a balcony? Well, there are ships like Royal Caribbean's Oasis class, which feature this specific class of cabin. These mega ships have spacious sections called neighborhoods and staterooms located throughout, overlooking public areas like the boardwalk and Central Park and other bustling ship promenades. For cruisers who like people watching, booking one of these cabins could be a fun way to feel like part of the action from your stateroom. However, remember the view goes both ways. If you're booked in a cabin location where you can see other passengers, just remember they can also see you. Plus everything you're doing inside of your cabin. If you're nervous about forgetting to pull the curtain before you begin changing, maybe you should opt out for a more private choice of cabin. Fortunately, when you go to book your cruise with Royal Caribbean, it clearly indicates what type of view your balcony has, whether it's an interior view or an ocean view. Now, this is where we need to caution you because getting an ocean view balcony on several of these ships does cost quite more. And several other cruise lines are rolling out these type of staterooms. So just because you book a balcony doesn't necessarily mean you're actually going to be getting an ocean view with that stateroom. For cruisers who value their privacy, another one of the worst cabins you could possibly book would be connecting staterooms. Cabins with connecting doors and balconies can be an efficient way for families and friends to cruise together. These staterooms are designed to flow into one another, creating a larger living space or one massive balcony. But if you're not cruising as a group, staying in a stateroom outfitted as a connecting cabin might be really awkward. If you're not sharing a room with the adjacent cabin, the inside connecting door will be locked. There will be a partition dividing both of your balconies as well, but beyond any issue of safety, these rooms are far less soundproof than cabins that don't connect. Not only will you know what your neighbor is watching on TV, but you'll probably be able to peek into their balcony. If you're not using both rooms, reconsider booking a connecting cabin for more privacy. Luckily, most cruise lines indicate where connecting cabins are on cruise ship deck plans so you can easily pick a cabin of the same category that doesn't indicate it's connecting. Cruising is great for everybody, even individuals who have mobility issues. However, if that's the case, then you definitely don't want to book a cabin that's too far from the elevators. Yes, getting closer to the elevator might be a little noisy. However, access to an elevator could be key if you or someone you're traveling with has a mobility concern. Again, reviewing the ship deck plans will help you here so you can see the exact location of your cabin to the nearest elevator. Other considerations might be the distance from your cabin to popular venues like the buffet, the pool deck, the theater, or your favorite lounge on the ship. If you're going to be making the same commute from the cabin to these spaces each day, it might make sense to book a room that will be within an easy walk or wheelchair ride. Now, as we mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of cruising, say over staying in a hotel, is that often you can pick your cruise ship cabin. And we'll be honest, it's a lot of fun to pick, to go through the deck plans and identify what cabins are available and pick that exact cabin that you're going to stay in for the week. So if you're like us and you know what to expect, then one thing you should definitely not do is book a guaranteed cabin. The allure of a low price stateroom could be hard to resist, but booking a guaranteed cabin is a gamble. So be prepared to lose out just in case it's not what you're anticipating. While you're able to select the minimum cabin category that appeals to you, your cabin location will be a total surprise. It's also information you might not find out until just weeks before the departure. If you're a flexible traveler and willing to take your chances, a guaranteed cabin could be one way to save money. However, if you're concerned about any of the complaints we just mentioned, like noise, elevator access, or seasickness, then it's not worth the hassle to leave your vacation up to fate. An easy remedy is just to make sure you pick your exact cabin for your cruise. Likewise, you probably want to avoid booking a last minute cabin upgrade. Now we admit it does sound tempting. 
you've selected the perfect room in a particular category, but told you're eligible for a room upgrade. While a better room category on paper might seem like a nice gesture, the location of the room is not up to you. This could leave cruisers in a conundrum of qualifying for an upgrade, but then wishing they actually stuck with their original booking because the upgraded room is in a worse location of the ship. Also, once you take the upgrade, you can't switch back to your original cabin selection. Remember that a higher cabin category doesn't automatically translate to a suite or even a room with a balcony. Be savvy about what you're actually getting and where. If offered the option for an upgrade, of course you can always decline. And it's also possible to mark your cabin selections as no upgrade with a cruise line or your travel advisor so you don't get a little surprise when you go to board the ship. Now that you know exactly what cabin is perfect for you, you need to find the perfect ship. Well, lucky for you, we just put out our picks for the top best new cruise ships of 2023. There's some amazing new vessels setting sail this year for brands such as Norwegian Cruise Line, Oceana Cruises, Carnival Cruise Line, Viking, and more. In that video, we give you a complete look at all these new vessels so you can identify which one is right for your next cruise vacation.